Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Morris from Consolidated Planning Group. Thank you so much for joining us on another one of our webinars. Um, we love having you here, and we are so proud to be part of the community and able to help educate and advocate for you. Um, if you've been here before, you kind of know the rules of the road, and I thank you for coming back and sharing another hour with us. If you haven't, I just want to let you know, um, today's webinar is being recorded. The email that you registered with, um, we are going to send a link to the recording, and we will also send all of the slides. So that's especially awesome because if there are any links in the slides, you'll be able to click on those. You will have all of our contact info and all of that will automatically go to the email that you registered with. So the other thing I want to let you know is that because we are in webinar mode, webinar mode, we can't see you or hear you, but I know you're out there. And like I said, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, we love that. We would love to make this kind of interactive. So please put any questions or comments that you have into the chat box, and we'll make sure we get as many of your questions answered as we possibly can. So today we're going to be talking about surviving caregiving, reviving your energy, outlook, and mental health. You know, there's this really cool thing that I keep hearing about. Um, that is very, very important and uh, very hard to find time to do. And it's called self-care. I don't know if you've heard of this. <laughs> I'm being facetious, but really it is so important that you take time to uh, have some self-care moments, to take time for yourself. And it's hard enough for everybody to find time to do that and to find the to prioritize themselves. And when you are a caregiver of someone else, it's even harder and even more important to find the time to do that. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today is how to survive being a caregiver. Before we get into that, before Christy gets started, I wanna talk just a little bit about Consolidated Planning Group, why we are presenting this and why you should be listening to us at all. <clears throat> we are located in the Houston area, and we serve families all across the country. We have been doing financial planning as a holistic financial advising firm for about 30 years. Um, but we focus mainly on helping families who have a loved one or an individual in their life who has some sort of intellectual or developmental disability. Um, We've got, like I said, over 30 years of experience in insurance and securities, investments, things like that. We are also members of the Special Needs Planning Academy, and we are nationally certified social security advisors. So when I say special needs planning, um, if you've not seen any of our webinars before, you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? Well, we help families with protection plans, thinking about what if something happens to you if you uh, become disabled yourself or if you pass away? How will the rest of your family go on? We talk about lifetime care plans and considering the costs of that lifetime care for your loved one, especially if they aren't going to be able to be fully independent. Uh, we talk about transition planning. You know, a lot of changes occur when your child turns 18 and, or when they graduate from high school, whether that be 18 or 22, um, and you have to plan ahead for those things. We help families set up ABLE accounts as well as all kinds of other things like life insurance and investments. We help you understand the legal side of um, taking care of your loved one, all of the benefits that they deserve. Um, and we're here to advocate for you and to educate you so that we clear out some of that clutter and noise and make things a lot easier for you to understand and help you focus on what really needs to happen and what you really need to do for your loved one. You know, there are over 163,000 financial advisors across the United States. And out of those two, uh, 263,000, 
fewer than a tenth of a percentage, fewer than 200 financial planning firms focus on special needs planning like we do. So you're definitely in the right space as you're looking at building a team of experts who can truly help you, who truly understand the nuances of special needs planning. I know that one thing that really keeps you awake at night is thinking about who will take care of your child when you are no longer able to do that. And to answer that question and to help you sleep a little bit better, we want you to plan starting now. It doesn't matter if your child is an infant or um, in grade school or about to turn 18 or already an adult. The time to start planning is now. We are not ever going to um, beat you up for not starting earlier. We just want to start right away and make the future better. The earlier that you start, the more time that you have to make a greater impact and to have a better outcome. So we want you to think about, especially, you know, what's going to happen after high school. All these years, your child is kind of in school. There's kind of um, a care system built in and support built in for you. But once high school is over, you don't want them to graduate just to the couch. You want to think about uh, post high school educational options, vocational options, and residential options. Um, think about touring places where your child might go after high school. There are great residential communities, vocational programs, um, partial care, day programs, all of that stuff. But you want to find out what is out there early and get on those wait lists if there are some. And think long and hard before you just assume that a sibling is going to want to take over the role of caregiver or that your child will want their sibling to be their caregiver. Um, it can become a sticky situation, even though in many families, that's what people choose to do. Just give it a lot of thought and a lot of um, long conversa conversations with your family beside, before you decide to do that. So um, I am going to go ahead and, uh, whoa, your slides are going by themselves. There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you now with Christy Pickrell. Thank you so much for being here. We cannot wait to hear about your organization and um, all the, the great advice you have to give to us. So please take it away, Christy. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you for having me because I think this is so important with self-care and um, just since we're going to give you some great strategies and tips, and I think it's, I think you're going to come away with this with a new perspective. So I share this quote with you that's up on the screen, because the first time I heard it, I was standing in a banquet that was actually honoring caregivers. And it gave me chill bumps to think about. And I realize that not only am I a caregiver, but I've needed a caregiver. And I personally, at some point, have fallen in all four of these categories. So I want you to, to know that in some capacity or another, we're all gonna fall into the caregiver role. So um, let's talk about surviving caregiving. What, why are we here today? We're going to re revive your energy and we're going to give you some tips on mental health and physical health. So before we start that, we need to understand what is a caregiver. This is the Webster de definition of a caregiver. But many of you think, okay, you may not be directly involved in a care. So, you know, or responsible for decisions that involve our kids. So let's talk about what, for me, a caregiver looks like. The first thing that pops up in our head is a doctor or a nurse. But what about as a parent, aren't you a caregiver? A grandparent? Siblings? We talked about those just a minute ago. They're just as much a caregiver. Babysitters? Therapists? 
And then I want to talk about the professionals, the case managers. You're all directly involved in somebody's life. So what's a survivor? A survivor, when I first thought of this, was I think of a cancer survivor or an accident survivor or a loved one that survived after the death. But it's also somebody that copes well with difficulties in their life. So you may think I'm not coping well, but we're going to get to that. You're doing better than you think you are. So I want to ask these four questions. I want you to think and kind of really examine who were the three most important people in your life? Did you put yourself on that list? If not, why not? Aren't you just as important? What would happen if you were not around? And let me assure you, you're not alone in not taking care of, not honoring self-care. Um, caregivers all over the country experience burnout. And the following, the next slide is, is talks about some of the common signs of caregiver burnout. I want to talk about these emotions because no. <laughs> yeah, we're not done all, with burnout. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. They're all signs of caregiver burnout, whether it's frustration, forgetfulness, extreme tired, quick to anger, anxious, depressed, hopeless, feeling hopeless, and underinterested in things that we used to enjoy. So 53% of caregivers suffer increased health issues. And the staggering, the thing that got me the most surprised was 50% of us are going to die before our carry. At Give Me a Break, we focus on caregiver wellness. And you're going to learn all about Give Me a Break in just a little bit. But I want to introduce you to my carry. This is my baby, Russell. He is 24 years old, nonverbal, severely at autistic and epilepsy. But before he came along, I was actually a respite provider as a teenager in college. And I worked in the Mar in Maryland. And so I, I end up with a unique atmosphere or a unique appreciation for caregivers because I was in the professional realm, but I'm now the mom of a special needs. So now let's talk about bringing the joy back to caregiving. The first thing I want you to re remember, and this is the first step in any survivor path, is that your emotions aren't stupid. Joy, sadness, pride, anger, they're all important. They all have their place. They all have their reasons. Cry, laugh, remember you're only human. So what are you feeling today? You know, now that we've talked about what caregiver burnout, drop in the comments, you know, your top emotion you feel as a caregiver. I want to talk about the three that get me down the most. So the first one is anger and frustration. And that for me leads to a lot of resentment and guilt. And we're going to talk about all three of these. And I'm going to share some stories and some suggestions on how to calm a frustrated moment, to remember what you did right and don't beat yourself up. So we're going to talk about all of this. But I want to talk about anger and frustration. For me, learning to acknowledge anger and frustration is my first step. And one of the things I often find out is that the anger and frustration that comes out is not usually about the situation that's happening at that moment. 
a lot of time, it's just a buildup. And let's talk about that buildup because I want to give you a visual that'll help you to think about our emotions. It's something I call the exploding emotional explosion. So think about a bottle that you shake that has carbonation or a garbage can that's overflowing. Every moment of every day, we have some type of emotion. We have some type of feeling. And a lot of times we don't have time to deal with them at that moment. So I want you to picture that frustration, the defeat, all of that like a piece of garbage and you put it in that can. Eventually throughout the days or weeks, that can gets full. So with that can, if it was in our kitchen, what would we do? We would no. take, out, take out the trash. But we don't think about that with our emotions. You need to empty and you need to let them go and you need to take out the trash because otherwise we explode, we overflow. And normally it's not at the right moment. <laughs> Never yeah. the right moment. <laughs> and or at the right person. So anger and frustration, that explosion comes from us holding those emotions in and not learning to let go. And letting go is um pivotal to me because we gotta empty that can. Mm -hmm. We gotta empty. Um, we got to set the bottle down and let the bubbles subside. So for me, the next one is resentment. And resentment is another hard one to acknowledge. Because oftentimes we're not sure what we're feeling resentful about. Um, we may think we resent our loved one or our spouse or our caregiver or the disability, you know, it can be anything. It may be people that we think aren't helping enough. They're not giving me the support I need. But resentment for me creeps up, it's crazy. I'm gonna tell you a story because I, I know you guys can all relate about this with um, resentment. I'm sitting in a family dinner and over the holidays, and I'm watching all the nieces and nephews run around. They're all about my son's age. And everybody's having a great time, laughing, joking. And I look out of the corner of my eye and I see my son. And he is sitting on the couch alone by the front door. And every time I look at him, he just wants to go home. And at that moment in time, I truly think I hated them all there. They didn't understand. They didn't appreciate what they had. And so I was resentful. Um, but, and then resentment leads to guilt. So I want to share this, this quote about guilt, because if this is not 100% true, Guilt is always hungry. Don't let it consume you. So you can't let guilt consume you. Guilt for me is the worst because I never, I always end up feeling guilty about something I thought or I did or didn't do. And those, we, we've got to learn to heal ourselves and let go of the guilt. So part of the healing process, um, and, and I'll be honest with you, the healing process is different for everybody and everybody's journey is not the same. But the first thing that I want you to remember that we talked about earlier is that our emotions aren't stupid. They are important and they have value. And they have a time and a place. 
so not everything works for everybody. So I, you guys may not have time for some of these, or you may think that, you know, all oh, this is, I, I, you know, but in the healing process, for me, I'm, I'm a control freak. I have to have my fingers on everything that goes on in this house, but I don't take, take it day by day, take it moment by moment, control what you can control and let go of the guilt and all the negative emotions, take out the trash and start recognizing all the positives in your life. So I call it the checklist. Remember the thousands of times you did the right thing. You did show love and patience and what you have accomplished. So yeah, you didn't get the dishwasher emptied before you went to bed. It'll be there in the morning and we'll get to it. You've done a hundred other little things all day. You've kissed a boo-boo. You've helped facilitate a therapy session. You've done a lot. And give yourself credit for that. We don't do that enough. We don't give ourselves credit. Health and wellness for caregivers is the most important thing I can think of. So a couple of things I want to talk about. The next thing is a breathing exercise. I do this when I literally feel like I'm going to explode. And I want you to take less than 60 seconds, close your eyes, and take three deep breaths. I'm going to tell you what each breath means, okay, and why it's important to take these deep breaths and why and how you can visualize yourself in this situation and bring it back to a level ground. So the first breath is called a centering breath. This is the breath that calms and soothes you and gives you a sense of control. So if we think about it, we're going to take that deep breath and we're going to regain control. And the second breath is the possibility breath. The possibility breath can restore the tranquility of your mind and allow you to perceive your highest choices. That means you can, you've centered, you've grabbed control, and now you can rethink. And then the third breath reunites you. And it reunites your spirit and turns a stressful situation into whether it be a learning opportunity or a, a, another way to deal with the anger. But it gives you, these three breaths give you control over your emotions. So I really like that one. And a lot of people say, I, you know, I don't have time. I can't close my eyes. I can't, you know, but just even if you can't close your eyes, just take that deep breath, at least that first deep breath and center yourself and get control. Um, so, and we're all going to lose it sometimes, um, you know, and that's okay too. We're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Um, so the next thing is preventative wellness. Um, what's the first thing you do in the morning? You wake up, you open your eyes, and you stretch. And it's that revitalizing stretch, you know, stretch out all your limbs. What if we do that in any moment when we're standing there and we're just trying to figure out what to do. Stretching has been known to increase serotonin levels. The the, we all know that's the hormone that stabilizes our mood, reduces our stress. So 
let's stretch. You know, you everybody can just kind of raise their hands, feel that stretch, you know, just get the kinks out and then breathe out. It brings us back to center again. Mm. What, 10 seconds? That felt great, by the way. <laughs> so the last thing I want to talk about you about today, before we go into where you can find out more about Give Me a Break and how we can help support you, I want you to embrace you. Find the positives. It may be the little thing that, you know, our kids just light up when we give them their favorite meal or when we sit down beside them and we get a kiss on the cheek. Find the positive moments. Make the best of it all. It's all part of the journey, the negative, the positive, the good, the bad, but enjoy the moments while we can because we know these kids grow up and they don't need mom as much. They do, but they don't, you know, they want their independence and practice wealth, wellness and mindful moments. It only takes 30 seconds to do that stretch, less than a minute to calm your breath. And you can do that breath, breathing exercise anytime. It doesn't just have to be when you're frustrated or angry. So who is Gimme a Break? Gimme a Break is a nonprofit that was formed. And I like to use um, our CEO's message. It's bring the joy back to caregiving. We care for caregivers and we want to bring back the joy. Um, she also says that she doesn't just want caregiving to be a role. She wants you to thrive and enjoy it. So Give Me a Break is based on caring for caregivers. We provide support, resources, community outreach, and we're all caregivers. So caregivers deserve the support. And there's not a lot of organizations out there that support caregivers. They're all focused on our loved one. But we need care too. We support caregivers to be able to dream and thrive and live. So what do we do? We have online support sessions. We have caregiver resources. We do educational seminars, just like this one that you're attending today. Um, we do caregiver pamper sessions where we come in and we will work with caregivers for a wellness exercises. We have an annual retreat and we have annual a recognition banquet. In this banquet, we acknowledge what caregivers do. Which and we acknowledge the sometimes important. far too rare that we feel acknowledged as caregivers. And it's the hidden caregivers, you know? I mean, as a mom, it's our job. But we deserve recognition. We deserve to feel good about what we're doing and knowing that we're making a difference in the, in the lives of our children. And our case managers and our doctors and all of that are making a difference in our kids' lives. So how do you get involved with Gimme a Break? You can attend our support sessions. You can donate. You can volunteer. Um, my email's on the screen. Um, don't hesitate to email me. We are um, actually looking um, at opening a chapter in Houston. So we're really excited about that. We offer online Zoom support sessions. And so this is where caregivers come to a safe spot. No judgment, just understanding. And it's online. 
right now our current session is Hawaii time, so that's not real convenient for us on the continental U.S. So but, is it at 8 p.m. Hawaii time? What is it here? Um, right now it is 7:30 Hawaii time. It's it's like midnight, I think. So, but we're gonna we're excited because hopefully the first of March, if we can get some, the support. Um, and people are interested in attending, attending the seminars, the support sessions, we're going to be launching Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central and 8 p.m. Eastern time. So that'll be a little easier for those of us, you know, that are in the continental U.S. And hoping to start April, the first week of April. But what we need you to do is we need you to go to our website and submit a caregiver support request. And those support requests give us the ability to know we there's a need and we can start the support session. We need at least three people to sign up. Um, and you don't have to sign up every week. It's not a commitment. There's no charges. It's just caregivers joining and sharing, you can share your day, you cannot share. Um, and you can just log on to our website and there's a there's a, a tab for caregiver support sessions. And you can join those support sessions anytime. They happen like clockwork and you need, you can go on and join them at your will. So does anybody have any questions for me? I mean, is there anything that anybody wants to talk about or share? Drop I it in the see, comments. Yeah, I do see the one note in the comments. How can you enroll for those Zooms? Um, so the, the Hawaiian standard time, I just looked it up. If it's at Tuesday, 8 p.m. HST, that means it's at 1 a.m. for central standard time. So that's not really Convenient. compatible <laughs> unless you just want to watch a recording of what they talk about. Then you can maybe do that if you register and, um, and if they send out recordings like we do. Yeah. But if you yeah. want to get in on helping them build one for locally, if you want to get in on helping build that um, Houston chapter, how do they contact you? So can I put the the website and my email in the chat for everybody, just oh. so they have it? Oh, okay. please. Yes. As, as a okay. matter of fact, it was right here. So here's um, the website. Here's Christy's email. Um, I'm dropping it in the chat so everybody can grab it. And like I said, right now, everything is, all of our local events are in Hawaii, but we are so excited that we are launching in Houston and we are going to bring all the services that they have in Hawaii to Houston. So we just got to get the ball rolling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like the most important thing for people to do if they're interested is to go to your website. Uh, they can sign up there. They can sign up there. There's a caregiver support request. And by filling that support request out, it asks for an address. And if you're not comfortable giving us your full address, the city and state, um, but it lets us know where we're needed. It lets us know where to focus our energies and be able to reach back out. We try very hard once you submit. Um, no, the Zooms don't have to be just in Houston. You can join the Zooms anywhere from the United States. Um, the retreats and things like that. So um, we're kind of in central Houston, kind of... Um, Right now, where I'm located is West Houston, um, but we'll be bringing things to different locations. Um, but the retreat and everything is in person. Um, the caregiver banquet, um, 
but we do a lot of educational seminars like Michelle's doing today. And those you can find on our website. Um, there's links to all of our webinars. So is, but I want to, I just want to reiterate, we're giving a break and we give gimme caregiver support and we gimme caregiver resources. We gimme caregivers community awareness. We're gimme a break. That so is thank you so much, Michelle, for yeah, having me on welcome. today. Yeah. And we are so excited to be bringing this opportunity. So yeah, this link will be clickable if you haven't written it down yet, or if you're listening on our podcast, the link for a Give Me a, Bre Give Me a Break website is www.gab, stands for Give Me a Break, gab808.org. That's gab808.org. And um, sign up there, let them know where you are and where they can bring their resources and, and how they can help you. And that's the best way to help them grow and to help them serve you and your community. Um, and that's what we're all about is serving yes. the giver. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Uh, you are so welcome. We've got a few more minutes, so please feel free to share your stories, your comments, and your questions as I wrap up with a few more slides and then we'll answer the last bit of questions and let you um, get back to your day. But you know, uh, we do offer these helpful educational webinars. Well, we try to make them helpful and educational as much as possible. I hope you find them to be so. Um, we offer these webinars two, three, sometimes even more than that times a week. We love being able to help support you and uh, to be part of your team when it comes uh, to caregiving and, and planning for the future and knowing what you really need to do um, to focus on taking care of your loved one. We help with all of the things on this list, you know, uh, developing a comprehensive special needs care plan thinking about future cost of care and estimating that number so that you know what your kind of goals are in terms of how much it will take to pay for the care for your child for the rest of their lives. We talk about waiver programs, um, how to get on the interest lists, SSI and SSDI and other benefits from the federal and state governments. Um, how and when to apply for those things and, and how that all works. Um, ABLE accounts, how to designate beneficiaries so that you can leave money for your children without jeopardizing those super important benefits. Special needs trusts, that's one way you can uh, save money for your child. And, and please remember, if you have a child who um, is turning 18 and receiving child support, if child support is a thing in your life, you need to know that that child support will be counted against them when they turn 18. That money will need to go to a first party special needs trust. And we can help you understand all of that. Um, residential living communities, we do help um, introduce our clients to communities and communities and resources to our clients. Guardianship, alternatives to guardianship, powers of attorney. We've done webinars with attorneys before going through all of this stuff. So that um, guardianship process can begin when you are within six months of your child turning 18. And then we do talk a lot about post high school educational options. This link will take you straight to our events tab on our website, where you can register for all of our upcoming webinars. You can see what we've got on the calendar, what might be information, uh, information that you want to take part in. And even if you can't join us live, you will receive the information in your email and you can go watch the webinar at another time when it's more convenient for you from our YouTube channel. This is our team. We are truly a small, independent, uh, holistic planning firm. 
Uh, we're located just outside of Houston. Like I said, we've got over 30 years of experience and we welcome families from all across the United States. We're members of the Special Needs Planning Academy. We are National Social Security Advisors and we're mil uh, members of the Million Dollar Roundtable, which just goes to show that a lot of people trust us and we help a lot of people. Uh, we, the four people on top, Allison and Jeff are a married couple. They are the owners of the company and they have two kids with special needs. That's why we do what we do. Then there's my glamour shot and my husband, Andy, with his big beard. Um, we are also parents. I used to be a teacher. Um, we all bring our experience and expertise because we work as a collaborative team for every single client that we have. Then we have a fantastic group in the office who helps with phone calls and appointments and paperwork and keeps us on task. So please take a look at all of these smiling faces, especially the ones on the bottom row, because when your phone rings and they say, hi, this is Sarah from Consolidated Planning Group. I want you to remember these smiling faces, not hang up on them or be rude, but just remember that we are trying to help. We want you to schedule a free consultation with us. These are on Zoom. They usually take just 30 to 45 minutes. Our first goal is to answer your questions. Whatever it is that's keeping you awake at night right now, whatever you don't understand about planning, maybe you're getting close to um, getting ready to apply for SSI and you have a couple quick questions about how that works. We want to answer your questions. And then we want to learn about you and your family and what you're going through. And we'll tell you how we work and what we charge for our services and decide if it would be a good idea for us to work together. I promise we don't bite. I promise we're not too pushy, but we want to help you. So we will be reaching out to see if you want to schedule your free consultation or if you have any further questions for us after this webinar. If you don't want us to call you, go ahead and use the QR code and set up your own appointment, or you can call us or email us. Uh, you can also follow us on our social media. The links are all down here, the YouTube, Instagram, our podcast, in case you prefer to listen instead of watching, and our Facebook page. Uh, so we do ask for you to fill out a short questionnaire beforehand, as much of the questionnaire as you're comfortable with. Uh, but we like to know what we're getting into before we open up that free consultation and, you know, speak with you. We want to know what we're getting into. That's why we ask for a few questions ahead of time. So hopefully we will hear from you soon. I don't see any other questions. That website has been posted in the chat again. I see uh, Christy posted it, but I will post it again. Christy, make sure you're... Um, messages are set to go to everyone there we go okay oh sorry that's all right that's all right i'm glad i caught that but yes the website for christie's for give me a break is gab808.org remember it's a dot org not a dot com okay and then uh, for Consolidated Planning Group, all of our contact info you'll receive later on today. It is actually also in the chat. I will put that in the chat again. And I really just want to say um, I appreciate you all for spending this time with me. Anytime you come to any of our webinars, I just feel so thankful and uh, proud that we are part of this community and that we are able to help you. I hope that this information is helpful to you and that you return. And, um, you know, even if you see the same webinar more than once, hopefully you pick up some nuggets here and there that will be helpful to you each time. So without anything else, no more questions. So I hope you all enjoy your week. It's Monday, so make it a great week. I know a lot of people are on spring break. Sign up for your appointments. If you're not busy this week, we would love to chat with you and um, give you the opportunity to pick our brains. Christy is here for you. You can email her if you have any more questions about give me a break. I am here for you if you have any more questions about planning for the future. All right, thank you all again. 
Thank you, Christy, for Thank all you. of this fantastic information. And don't our forget to stretch today. Oh, yes. Yes, I absolutely <laughs> will. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.